in the meantime, we'd like to do a feature here now on Veritone. And Ryan Steelberg's with us, CEO and Chairman of the Board of, Ra of Veritone. Thank you for being with us. It's great to be here. So tell us a little bit about the company for someone who may not be as uh, well-versed sure. on Veritone. Well, we're a 10-year-old AI company which is an interesting statement to start with. Um, yes, that's true. Yeah. And so we uh, started this company uh, right after our 10 years at Google um, to really go out and tackle the sheer magnitude of unstructured data, audio and video, which is a major problem in every sector that we're seeing. But we initially started primarily in media and entertainment, helping media companies like NBC Universal, ESPN, Sony Pictures, help them ingest and understand what's inside their content leveraging AI. And so that's how the business started. And uh, it's been an exciting kind of growth story for the business. We have a few thousand customers today. And I think more recently, which is really interesting, is we parlayed that approach into the public sector. So we're now working with state and local law enforcement agencies and the Department of Defense and the Department of Justice. So yeah, I definitely that's a quick do want to talk about that. We promoted that earlier because uh, certainly very notable. Just to stick to the kinds of customers that you've had thus far, you yep. know, the few thousand customers prior to getting involved with the government and some of these key things that you're working on now. I mean, the kinds of customers, you mentioned Universal and mm -hmm. some of the media type names. Is that the main customer base? What else would be in the customer base? Um, it, it's mostly those and in, in, in the media and entertainment space, so sport teams and sport franchises. Mm. Um, I'd say tentpole events like the U.S. Open, the Masters Golf Tournament. Sure. Um, a lot of broadcasters, so I'd say ad-supported groups like iHeartMedia, um, Beasley Broadcasting and the like. And then I'd say you know studios um, and Amblin Entertainment, Sony Pictures. So right. kind of kind of the full gamut for media and entertainment companies. And how did we enter into this area with the Department of Defense, Department of Justice? Because now we're looking at law enforcement yeah. and safety and the concern and. This is some, a big deal. I mean, so fearful when you think about what could be, right? It started with inbound DARPA from the government, reached out to us, um, was really interested in what we were doing at scale with audio and video. And, and very simple is, could we apply that to the federal government? They are obviously producing a lot of drone footage, satellite footage, so there's a tonnage of unstructured right. data problem. Um, but very quickly we saw the same problem for state and local law enforcement. Um, body cameras, dash cams, drone footage. What you know, do you do with all that? What do you do with all that? Where do you store it? Right. How uh, do you, how do you is, make it, any sense of it? It's just going to sit there in a hard drive or is somebody right. going to go through it and analyze it? So a lot of the exact same technologies that we were applying for meeting entertainment assets was a right. perfect extension for us to take the business into public sector. Right, very interesting because uh, we talk about data storage, what to do with all this stuff, but you can start to find trends. I mean, if you're using satellites, the countries, the, co the government, yes. using satellites to see grass, you know, water, areas, what's happening. Um, for the body cams, you might get some trends on how things are going, right? I mean, are there any takeaways yet on some of this? You know, I think, you know, that this migration for it started with cloud adoption, right? We needed cheap storage and we needed cheaper compute, which mm -hmm. has happened, the mm -hmm. hyperscalers. Right. Then the AI revolution, you know, we needed, you know, I'd say, powerful infrastructures, NVIDIA, the chipsets. Now we're really at the software side. So now I think, think, think the freeway is there. Now we have the capabilities and technology to analyze a, a tremendous amount of data that makes it practical. So now we can, if back to your analogy, if I'm trying to track oil tankers, right, yeah. and how yeah. they're floating in the ocean across the seas, we now have the capacity to ingest and analyze thousands and thousands of hours of content very, very quickly to, to, uh, to discern and make assumptions or get better analysis from that. Combating human trafficking. I mean, that's. Thank you for doing that. I mean, it's that's an exciting so terrible. one. Yeah. I mean, it's such, and we've seen that growing. It, right. You know, yes. I mean, we have a solution. One of our applications is called Track. Very simply, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it and allows us to, you know, basically track people of interest, whether it's using biometric markers like your face, or in jurisdictions that you're not allowed to do that without mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Across camera, we kind of call it our. It's our Jason Bourne app, right? But again, human trafficking and trying to find those those you know, dangerous situations or people of interest is one of the key key use cases. Um, I still want to talk about the future and what the plans are and the agenda, but one more really critical is um, campus security. As, yes. a, as a mom who has two boys in two separate colleges, both of whom were in shelter in place yeah. um, at different times. Uh, you know, for an active yeah. shooter, it's just, it's awful. 
another use case that I didn't really foresee when we launched this. You know, yes. I guess I understand police officers when they're, you know, doing a stop or something. Um, but we have dozens of universities now. It, it, it's, it's a problem. Um, sure. And if there, if there are, I'd say, cameras and audio and video capture or citizen upload, we're there to help them now that we can actually do stuff. So campus security is a, a new client base for us as sure, well. Sure, sure. So law enforcement, campus security, human trafficking. Um, I can almost see this going into almost every venue. Right? I mean, whether it's it malls be. or theaters yeah. or, I mean, every time I go to the movie theater, I got to tell you, I'm still nervous because I remember when we've had attacks in the yeah. movie theater. I mean, when I used to take my son when they were young in first grade, you know, with their friends, my I would sit on one end, my husband or my mom would sit on the other, and we put all the kids in the middle. Yeah. Because there were some bad things that happened in movie theaters. So um, do you foresee this on the agenda for theaters, for malls, for what else? I think it's happening now. I think, yeah. you know, there's more progressive groups. You know, there's always a fine balance of, you know, personal security and, and you know, personal protections and data, right. you know, data protections. Um, but but it, you know, in those municipalities and cities where they are okay with that, I think this should be everywhere, right? Do we have all of the raw materials and things you need to run the data centers and AI to make this all happen? I feel like whether it's electricity or things that are needed to make all of this actually, because now you're taking in so much data, yeah. right? And you're moving so fast. Do we have enough to make all of this actually happen at a proper pace? Um, I, I think you still have a limitation at the edge capture. So, for example, trying to bring high resolution camera feeds um, to the cloud based environment at times can be inefficient. So, I think that you're going to see a, a continuing effort for a hybrid based solution where you're doing some of the AI cognition at the edge, so at the camera level, and then potentially just moving back and forth to the cloud, the metadata. So, not to be too technical, but it's a way, there's ways that we can take advantage of the current infrastructure, the current uh, efficiencies of the chipsets, um, but by handling the workload today. Yeah. Over time, like we've always seen, is eventually I see more stuff being you know, moved to the cloud yeah. just because the cost basis and the efficiency is going to increase. Look, we have so much when we talk about AI. Um, what names stand out to you? Do you like what they're doing, all these different companies? Maybe you could sort of name some trends that you're watching yeah. um, that are interesting, and you may be even partnering with some of these companies too. Yeah, I mean, I'll call out AWS. I mean, yeah. they've been Let's a partner hear. of ours. You know, we're agnostic platform, um, yes. but, the, but we do co-sell with AWS. You know, they've made obviously some very big investments into their stack to support, you know, the latest chipsets. Um, they continue to, to keep up with the demand, in my mind, for capacity on the compute side and the storage side. Um, so I, 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 I'll call them out as a great partner who's still very uh, progressive and in investing heavily um, as a hyperscaler. Um, but there's all different types of companies. I mean, I think you know what's exciting about this phase is I, I feel that we're kind of at the crest of the wave for infrastructure. We all know NVIDIA. We all know the chipsets. Um, I think you're now going to start to see a, you know, a multitude of exciting new companies pop up that are more, I'll say, on the application software side. I like to say is you always follow where the money is going, and, and a lot of the venture capital, like Sequoia and others, that's the biggest level of investment right now is the, I'll say, the end application workflow level. Agent AI is part of that, slate, that, that get, opportunity. Okay, thank you for that. Let's get to some of the dollars and cents of things. I mean, you had you registered the direct offering. Um, we're watching the name closely. When you, when you look at the books, um, you know, the shareholders are going to want to see certain yep. developments as well. Um, what do you tell them? Well, for Veritone, all eyes for us are on public safety. So that's an area that we've started to invest in you know, a few years ago. You know, we're, we're now you know, starting to land and announce new contracts with you know, the DOD and the DOJ. Mm -hmm. um, so I think most you know, excitement for our company, at least, is how quickly we can scale our public sector business. Um, that's one, and then just fundamentally, you know, we're we're still we're a company that still has a little bit of debt. We're you know, as a, as a small cap company, we still have to clean up some of our balance sheet stuff. Um, but we're excited. We, we it's a huge TAM in front of us. You know, we have a very large, you know, big logo brand customer base, and so. Right. We're really excited about 2025 and beyond. The AI offerings that you've been expanding, you talk about expanding this in your partnership with AWS, you also have with CBS yes. and, and, and the government. Um, you know, obviously this is part of the way that you make money with these AI offerings. I mean, talk about some of the expansion and some of the things that they, you've seen more demand for. So something that's new and really interesting is, let's take, um, the Big Ten football conference. You're like, well, the Big Ten, they're a client of ours. We've been mm -hmm. ingesting all of their um, video and audio assets for years. Um, so it'd be, it'd be practical. Every time an Ohio State football game is airing, sure. that's being ingested by Veritone Technology Organizing Indexing. 
So think of, uh, of most of our um, applications have been acting upon the data. Um, so we're trying to get better insights and intelligence from the audio and video. What's recently happened is we're now using that same audio and video to train models. So you've, you've heard about what OpenAI, and there's frankly good and bad and a lot of lawsuits out there about a lot of these large language models who are using public information to train their models. Well, now you're seeing premium content groups like the, those are clients. We're now using those assets to actually train these multi-modality models. Um, the likes of the Geminis and the open AIs, everybody is looking for how are they gonna advance their proprietary AI models. So that's another um, you know, kind of organic, exciting, potentially high scale opportunity for us is taking our existing customer bases who have this premium content, and that is now an input function for training. So I also saw um, UBS, for example, not that long ago, late, late October, upgrading a Veritone to a neutral from a cell. So are you finding that the analyst community is getting more on board with Veritone too? Um, I think it's going to take time. So, you, you know, our story, we were, you know, I think for us, we got into a few too many markets. So we've been around for 10 years. Um, like mm -hmm. to say is, you know, timing is everything for a new startup. Um, and, and so we, the market really wasn't mature enough for, the, for our, the, I would say, the first half of our existence as a company. And we got a little, I'd say, fragmented. We were in energy grid optimization. We were doing all kinds of different things, frankly, waiting for the market mature. Obviously, the, you know, the whole AI phenomena, and we'll call the, the demarcation point of chat GPT launch, has renewed companies' investment into it. So Veritone, which we've done over the last couple of years, has gotten refocused on these categories. As I mentioned, public safety and commercial and media and entertainment, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. And so again, rebuilding that trust with the, the sell side analyst and rebuilding that trust with investors, I think we've done a great job. Um, and then proof is in the pudding. We're gonna have to put together a few good quarters of performance. But obviously, if they kind of look through the surface, we're one of those few companies that actually has right thousands of real AI-based customers, and we've had them for years. Thousands of, of real AI-based customers. Also, I think about your staff and the type of team that you need. Um, have you found the skill set that you need from yep. coast to coast? Um, you know, how many employees do you have? Yep. Tell me a little bit about that. So we're right around 500 total employees. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've done a good job of, like many companies, is figuring out how to, to acquire and manage remote talent. So we're not constrained, obviously, because of, you know, again, we're mostly a remote first company. Um, so we, we, I think we've done a good job. Obviously, with our track record and our background of multiple companies, um, we've been able to, frankly, bring along a lot of our ex-Googlers and teams. So we have a lot of, frankly, the same nucleus of, of I would say, leadership architects right. that have come along with us. Um, but you know, we, we're, I think we're, you just have to be competitive. It's a very competitive marketplace out there, particularly in the data science category, as you know. Um, but, but it's not just the compensation, it's the mission, right? What, what are we doing? Is it really a true application of AI? And what's the end mission? I mean, are people excited about helping our law enforcement agencies? So I think all this comes into effect when we're putting out the pitch of why join Veritone versus Google. I right. think we have a pretty compelling story. And this California law enforcement real-time data insights, I mean, just a quick explanation of yeah. that, because we talked about DOJ yeah. and DOD. And this one's more, um, I think, um, isolated California. But in California, there's the RIPA laws, which are racial profiling laws. Um, so if a police officer or sworn officer ever stops you, they actually fill out, have to fill out a report. Um, and you can imagine the sensitivities around that topic right there. So um, what we've done is we've created a whole new brand new solution to automate it. So we have about 20,000 sworn officers today that use Veritone contact that makes that almost automates that process. Oh, that and then immediately sense. we provide that data okay. so they can sift through. And obviously they're trying to look at is there a bias obviously towards different demographics when people are getting stopped or pulled over. Great to see you. V-E-R-I is the ticker. Ryan, thank you so thank much. You. Ryan Steelberg, CEO and chairman of the board at Veritone. Thank you, thank you for being with us.